Let me ask you this, do you know how many bacteria are on your phone right now? The answer is a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing a device that claims to be able to sterilize and kill bacteria and viruses on your phone using UV light. So for this review, let me go over any disclosures. No, this is not a sponsored review. I bought this with my own money. And in the description, if you wanna check this out for yourself, I did put a link to Amazon. It's an affiliate link and it doesn't cost you anything, but it will help me fund the purchase of future products so I can do more reviews like these. So let's get right into it. The device I'm reviewing today is called the Phone Soap and it's pretty straightforward. It's basically an enclosure that you put your phone into and it uses UV light to kill any bacteria, viruses, anything of that sort. But obviously the big question is, does it actually work? Well, for this review, I did a full-blown science experiment. I got some Petri dishes so I could actually test how much bacteria was on the phone before and after sterilization. And the results were pretty definitive. Now, before we get into that though, let me quickly go over the other basic features of the device. Inside the enclosure, there are two ultraviolet lamps on the top and bottom to cover both sides of the phone simultaneously during the process. And it actually uses UVC type light, which is a shorter, higher energy wavelength of light than UVA or UVB, which you might be familiar with. And UVC light is considered germicidal, which means it can kill bacteria, viruses, and the like. It also won't heat up the phone or anything, so you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. As for size, it'll support even up to the biggest phones, anything with measurements of less than 6.8 by 3.74 by 0.78 inches. So that'll easily fit the biggest phones on the market, including the iPhone 7 Plus and Galaxy Note 7. For power, it uses a micro USB input and it comes with an AC adapter to plug into the wall. And another cool feature is it has USB power pass through. So it's got a slot on the side where you can put your phone's charging cable into the enclosure to charge your phone while it's cleaning. So that's a nice touch. Now to activate it, all you have to do is open the lid and stick your phone in and close it again. And as soon as the lid closes, it automatically turns on the UV lights inside side and you know it's working because the light on top will be glowing to show that the lamps are on. After a little while it will turn off automatically once it's done and you'll know that because the light on top will turn off too. Now one interesting thing is the instructions say it goes for about five minutes before turning off but I noticed it goes for about 10 minutes and that's not a big deal to me. I'd actually rather it go a little bit longer, but it's something to keep in mind. It's possible they just updated it to let it go a little bit longer. Either way though, you can open the lid at any time to stop it and the lights will shut off instantly. So you don't have to worry about being exposed to the light at all. Now, obviously the big question is performance because you can take it out and look at the phone and just looking at it, there's no way to really know if the bacteria is dead or not. Though, as I mentioned, I decided to do an experiment to find out how well it works. So why don't we go over the table and test it out and find out for ourselves. All right, so let's do this experiment. As you can see, the setup is I have four different Petri dishes and I have one for the front screen of the phone before and after the plus and minus. We have one for the back on the case plus and minus again before and after, and also just the back of the phone without the case. And then there is a control and the positive control will just be off the table or something and negative will be hopefully no contamination at all. So we can make sure that nothing went wrong that we didn't know about. So the first thing we wanna do is test the phone before we do anything to it. I just took it out of my pocket, no even brushing off the screen or anything. And so what we'll do first is do the front and I have these different swabs here. Now what they tell you to do is actually dip the swab into a bottle of water unopened so it's just regular water and then swab that onto the sample. So I just have an unopened bottle of water here that we're gonna use. First we're gonna do the front of the phone. Get it nice and covered. And then we're gonna do, put that on the Petri dish. Try to do it as quick as possible. All right, we'll cover that right back up. And then that's gonna be closed for the rest of the experiment until we open it back up. Now we can do the back of the phone. Swab it like this. Get all that on there. Now we can do the back without the case on there. We'll do the back. And now I, I don't know if this is gonna have any less because I keep a case on it at all times, but that'll at least be interesting to see. So now we know all these samples were taken at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll put it in just like this first and keep the case off it since it's still contaminated. And then we'll do that again and swab it in a row. So let's go ahead and put it in. We'll do one cycle, keep it simple. 
and we close it up and it's lit up. I don't know if it shows up, but it is going. We can kind of double check. Yeah, I see it going, so it's going. Okay, so the light turned off, which means it's done, and I'm gonna have to be careful with this because I don't wanna put the phone down. I actually got this, so we'll, we can do that maybe if we have to. Uh, you know what, I don't even have to touch it perfectly, so I'll do the front. And this is after, so we'll do it at the bottom. So now we just have to do the case and then take it out once it's done. Okay, so it finished up, the light turned off, so we can now test the case. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to seal these up with tape. Well, not seal them up, but close them up with tape. Air still needs to be getting in. And then I'm actually going away for a few days, so I will be able to leave the apartment much hotter than normal, so it will be a nice incubator. And then when I come back in a few days, the bacteria should grow and we should be able to see a stark comparison between the plus and minus, and we will know how well it worked, if at all. All right, so this is what happened after about four days. And as you can see, I put these in plastic bags so it wouldn't start to stink or anything. And here's a dark background, so you should be able to see what's going on. And you should already be starting to see what happened. So let's go through these one by one. First of all, the control that was just off the table. And there was a little bit of bacteria, not much. Makes sense. And more importantly, there was none where there was no bacteria placed at all. So that makes sense. Now let's look at the front of the screen and the back without the case. As you can see, there's basically no bacteria at all in the plus or minus. That's an interesting result. There is one speck on the back here, but that could just be random because that's in the middle where I wasn't trying to put any bacteria. Still, it's interesting that we didn't see any. Uh, that could be for a couple reasons. First of all, could be that glass or the hard, shiny, polished surface at the back is not that good for bacteria to grow. And I think that's probably the most likely case and maybe if we let it go much longer at a higher temperature, we would start to see bacteria grow. But right here, we didn't see anything, nothing in the beginning and nothing at the end either. Finally, we have the case, which as you can see, has a ton of bacteria on the positive and basically none in the negative part, which is exactly what we were hoping for, which means that there was a lot of bacteria before we sterilized and I don't see any afterwards. And if I had to guess, there was a lot of bacteria more on the back because this is more of a rubbery, porous surface where I guess a lot of bacteria can live and probably a lot of nutrients for the bacteria at least. It's probably a lot easier for bacteria to survive on this material, so it kind of makes sense. So I think these results pretty much speak for themselves. You can make your own conclusion, but it's pretty obvious, especially here, that it was able to kill basically all the bacteria. Okay, so as you saw, I think the results were pretty clear. While there wasn't that much bacteria to begin with on the front and back of the phone, there was a lot initially on the case. And that probably has to do with the rubbery material of the case being more hospitable than the glass back and front of the phone. Afterwards, however, it does appear to have killed basically all the bacteria that was there before. So I guess for the final verdict, the answer is yes, it does appear to work quite well. And I guess that covers about everything. So again, I'll put a link in the description if you guys wanna check this out for yourself on Amazon. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it and also subscribe for more tech reviews like this and also tech news and discussions. I currently upload videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, oftentimes more than that, so it should be worth it. If you guys wanna check out some more videos, I've got them right here. You can actually click on that, even if you're on a phone, it's a new type of annotation, so you can check those out. And again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys what you thought of this review down in the comments section, or I'll be looking on Twitter as well. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I will see you next time. Have a good one.